my chainsaw. Uh, my only running chainsaw currently. It's an Echo CS3000. I've had it for a few years now. I bought it at an estate sale where it had been sitting outside in the field for who knows how long. And really didn't have to do anything to it other than dump fuel in it. And it's run ever since. It doesn't run the greatest, but it runs good enough that I leave it alone. Which is great. But I've now moved to a property that has zero trees on it. So I have absolutely no use for a chainsaw other than the occasional Amazon box opening. But that has recently changed with a new Facebook Marketplace purchase that I have made. And that Marketplace purchase, you may ask, is a small pallet worth of old cardboard boxes. But the boxes aren't what's important. It's what's inside of the boxes that I find very cool. And I would say very rare. So what we have here is four different attachments made by a company called Versa Tools. And Versa Tools operated out of California in the early 80s. And from the research that I've done, they either went out of business or at least this particular line of attachments, tools, whatever you want to call them, never took off. I've only actually found pictures of one of these attachments that I own. So I would arguably say they're very rare, but I challenge you to prove me wrong in the comments down below. I'd love to find any other information on this company. There's a few other attachments they sell, which I didn't get that I think are really cool and would like to have. So let me know if I'm wrong, but let's start digging into what I got. So the first tool we're going to talk about here, attachment, is the one I think I'm most excited about. And that is a very small generator, believe it or not. So we'll just kind of go ahead and unbox it here. I already have. So it comes with the generator head, some little tiny jumper cables, some paper, and some more paper. So this says this tool must be used in conjunction with the VT100 or VT110 chainsaw adapters, which I do have, thankfully. What else does it say? It says it's a 500 watt, 500 watts of lightweight, dependable, portable power equipped with 115 volt AC and 115 DC sockets. This VT500 generator is an ideal unit for homeowners, campers, ranchers, boat owners, and just about anyone needing fast power in a hurry. This unit has a unique 12 volt battery charging capability for your car, boat, or airplane. Another winner for Versa Tools. But I mean, check out that box. That advertising is awesome. So to give you an idea of size, this thing is about the size of a car alternator, maybe a tiny bit beefier. On top here, we just kind of have the same information again, 500 watts generator attachment. Their town, which is Sun Valley, California. A note up here that says exciter must be pressed for power. We'll have to look into that if we actually get it working assuming that would be the exciter button. We have two plugs here, the AC and DC, two lights, and then the plug for the charging cables. On the back here, we have a four bolt mounting system and a small rectangular drive shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the attachments that I also got and see if we can't figure out how to hook this thing up. Okay, so here is one of the adapters. It's a right angle gearbox with a female version of that shaft, a bolt pattern that is clockable, and then another clockable turnable, I guess. Uh, flange, and you can see something that looks remarkably like a chainsaw bar and a sprocket. So let's see if we can get this paired up here. Grab a Phillips screwdriver so we can turn that. All right, All right. I'm gonna grab my chainsaw and try and hook this thing up. So we got the bar torn off my little Echo here, and they give you the cutest little chain to hook this up with. So it's a chainsaw chain just without teeth, which I've never seen before. 
So we get a drape around there. Actually, we'll get it around our clutch first. We'll get that chain roll on like so. And then I guess we just take our old bolt. No, sorry. All right, simple as that. Now, one thing that makes this saw a little less ideal for this task is how this saw is designed. Is the chain tensioner is built into the bar. So that means the only way I can tension this chain is by pulling it back by hand. So long term, this is not really a great saw to use for this. But it's the only saw I have right now, so it'll have to work. Ideally, you'd want a saw that has a tensioner built onto the saw rather than the tensioner, or the bar. But anyway, we got it hooked up here, so let's see what happens. It's been a while since I started this saw, so that's step one is to get it fired up. assume this is the exciter button and it was not exciting now I was trying to check I know I used to have some Akita grinders that were AC and DC and I'm pretty sure these are it so I really wanted to verify before I try the DC side but I think we'll just go for it I don't think this thing's generating power anyway so Let's see if the saw will fire up one more time <laughs> sounds like it's gonna blow up not a big fan of that well I think for now the generator is gonna be a fail I'm not completely giving up on it who knows I could be under spinning it it could be going the wrong way somehow I don't know what's going on I know generators don't like to sit and this one's obviously sat for probably close to 40 years now so there's plenty of room for it to have issues I don't like how the saw was sounding at the end there, running at full bore like that. I've never run a saw like that for that extended period of time. Probably not really good for it. So before we blow it up, trying to get the first attachment running, I'm going to go ahead and swap something else onto here that I think I'll have a better chance of working. So with the generator a no-go for now, we're going to move on to our next tool, which I have actually seen a variance of these produced before. These are actually out there in the world, and this is the only Versa tool I could find a picture of or any proof of someone actually buying one. And that is a drill attachment. Drill bit not included. So same as last time, let's just do a little bit of reading. We have a half inch heavy duty drill attachment. It's called the VP400. This is a professional quality portable drill, which is a must for the homeowner contractor or do it yourselfer. It has a 180 degree rotating head and a complete and complete gasoline portability allows this half inch heavy duty drill to be used anywhere. Mentions again that you need the attachment. And yeah, it actually shows being used on a very old style of my little echo saw. Let's go ahead and get it out here. So we have some paper that is rusted and we have a drill and a handy dandy little handle. So this is a very simple tool. Looks like our handle goes there. Thankfully they threw in a chuck, which is handy. Pull that out of there. And yeah, very simple little thing. Let's go ahead and slap it on the saw. So to start, we'll just attach it to the adapter. We're going to use the same adapter as last time. 
All right, voila. We're all ready to throw it in the saw. All right, we got it on there. We got it pretty tight. I like it with the handle. It's a little scary having your hand this far in front of a chainsaw. I'm not really used to that, but seems like it'll be a nice stable tool to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a drill bit to throw in here. All right, let's fire this thing up and see what happens. smoke my clutch on my saw that would make sense why it wasn't happy spinning that maybe I should have stopped a little earlier it's been a full 24 hours I felt the clutch yesterday after the video and it was definitely hot I don't know if I killed it yet but it's definitely not happy so we're gonna go ahead and fire us all today and see if I could be careful not to smoke the clutch or what's left of the clutch and do a little bit of drilling Go ahead and give it a try. chain tension a little bit and it's perfectly happy so makes sense we had too much restriction going on by how tight i had the chain so now we know don't make the chain super tight just like you shouldn't make a chain super tight for a chainsaw chain so now that we're successful through wood let's try drilling some steel Well, it did it. It's not a lot of fun to hold on to. It's very unbalanced. It vibrates in your hand like crazy. And the saw's smoking like crazy now. I think that's just some oil it got on the exhaust though. But hey, we drilled through some steel with a chainsaw, which not many people in this world can say they've done that, I don't think. So get me in the Guinness Book of World Records. But in all seriousness, would I consider this a valuable tool? Yeah, I think it has some use. In the 1980s, maybe, when there wasn't a lot of corded or cordless electric tools. These days, would I call the drill-powered or chainsaw-powered drill a useful tool? Not really. Anything I think this thing's going to be able to do can probably be done with a cordless drill. All right, so this next tool is by far my personal favorite, and I think the most hilarious. The box is in rough shape, to say the least, but what we have here is the Versa Saw VT200. Sawzall attachment for your chainsaw. Now, let's see what they have to say here. Here's an easy-to-attach, heavy-duty reciprocating saw for use with your chainsaw. It allows for finer cuts than any chainsaw and cuts through wood, metal, or masonry. Most universal blades fit the VT200 Versa Saw, making replacements easy and convenient. Saw blade not included. Uh, mentions we need a adapter. Really, that's all. They don't put too much on these boxes. Let's go ahead and open it up here. We have the saw and the handle. So the saw is a very simple thing. Uh, reciprocating saws all attachment. Versus saw, so on and so forth. So yeah, 
if you look from here forward, it looks like it should be a reciprocating saw, but everything else looks foreign. Looks like we'll have to rotate the adapter down to use this one. And our handle goes in right there. Sweet, let's get it on the saw. All right, so I went ahead and turned the adapter so it's facing downwards, which is very easy to do. All right, let's throw a blade in here. We got a nice Milwaukee torch blade, metal cutting. We're gonna jump right to metal cutting. Skip the wood. Because if you wanna cut wood, just use your chainsaw. Get a load of that. So we have an uber long blade on it, which makes it look even stupider. This thing sticks out a foot already, and then you got about a foot long blade. Makes this thing stupid cumbersome, I bet. Man, does that look cool. Let's see if it cuts. There's a wicked thunderstorm happening outside, but man, does that thing work? Took a nice little chunk out of there. It is super cumbersome to use. I feel super scared having my hand out here. That just seems totally backwards on a chainsaw, but it's what you gotta do to actually be able to use this thing. So this thing does cut steel. I think it would cut thicker. It would just take forever. Man, is that thing goofy looking. So, is this a useful tool? Yeah, I mean, it works. But again, an electric cordless chain or a Sawzall could do this a lot easier, a lot quicker probably. Not quicker cut wise, but just set up time and all that jazz, but it will work. The only thing an electric Sawzall has on it is compactness, I would say, really. And maybe it'll run weirder angles for better longer. So, Sawzall works. Drill works. We have one more tool to test down there. Alrighty, it's been about a week. I just got wrapped up doing other things. My dirty sweatshirt changed colors, but we have our last attachment to try out, which I have never used this one. I haven't even opened the box for this one. So what we have here is the Versa Pump BT300. Shown with a sweet old McCullough chainsaw. Looks like we've got a marina in the background. Pumping out the hull of your sinking ship. I don't know what we're doing. More talk about the adapter. And let's see here. This high quality lightweight pump can be used around the home, pool, pond, or boat. Whenever the need to fulfill a whole host of pumping functions. Six gallons per minute pumping capacity allows you the standard, allows you to use a standard garden hose. Another great tool from Versa Tool. So I don't even know if the whole thing's in here. Like I said, I haven't opened this up yet, so let's see. All right, we got some paper, not even rusty, nice. Oh wow, there's a lot of parts and stuff here. Now I have some fear about this tool because pumps have diaphragms and O-rings and gaskets inside of them. And those things don't like to sit for a long period of time. Otherwise, a little hint of mud, like it might've been used once. Turning the shaft, I mean, everything turns. Uh, the usual stuff written on it. The housing is plastic, but the adapter is aluminum. So let's go ahead and throw it on here and see what happens. All right, one of the, if not the most compact tools so far, went on very easily. 
I'm gonna leave it in this configuration. You could turn it up, doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a hose and some water and see what this thing does. Huh, a little note here I missed before. Don't run pump dry, okay? And do not pump gasoline. Man, couldn't imagine why they wouldn't want to be doing that. All right, we got it all hooked up to a bucket of water here and let's see what happens. It's just not picking up water. I'm not doing it any favors at all with that long hose, but I was trying my very best to prime it. And that little bit of water you did, she's shooting at was when I was pulling the hose up out of the bucket, blowing through it to try and get it to siphon it. But no luck. Maybe I'll go buy a short hose and we'll try it one more time. Alrighty, it's been another week and I'm finally getting around to trying the pump one more time. So I have a much shorter hose, and this time I actually siphoned out water through the hose, so there's definitely a good supply of water getting to the pump now. So let's fire it up and see what happens. Alrighty, so that's all four attachments here. We had the not such great success with the generator, which if you guys really like this video, I may consider sending it out to a alternator slash starter rebuild guy and see if they can get that working. It's, it's in really good shape. I think it just didn't like sitting. The saws all worked great. The drill worked also great. The pump, sadly not so much. I think those O-rings and seals inside of it have probably just dried up from sitting since what I assume would be 1981, so... I really enjoyed making this video. 
I don't think I'll ever come across attachments like these again. But with that being said, I don't know what to do with them. I'm not necessarily a chainsaw collector. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think I should do with these. If I should pass them on to someone who will really appreciate them. Or save them for some funky project. Or, I don't know. You guys always come up with some cool ideas. So, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and liking. And I'll see you guys on the next one.